The first thing that you're going to do when you get ready to survey and design a cast is to look at the cast and just eyeball it and think about the rules that you have along with what the cast has. On the Kennedy Class 4, which is what we have here, we're not going to be replacing this tooth back here, so we have a single edentulous area crossing the midline. We look to see that our fulcrum line on a Kennedy Class 4 is right across the two anterior abutments. And in our rules, we find that this partial denture is want, wanting to lift up in this direction when the patient eats sticky foods. And when the patient bites down, the back wants to flip up. So the rules say that we should have a direct retainer close to or actually in front of, if we can, our fulcrum line and as far away from that fulcrum line as possible. So when we think about this cast, we're going to look to see whether we have retention on the canines, on the mesial facial, that'd be the farthest place mechanically that we could get retention, but we might want to consider for aesthetics to go to the mesial facial of the two first premolars, and that way we would not see ugly clasp on our canines, and we're still pretty close to that fulcrum line, so we would be achieving that purpose of keeping it from lifting up when, it, when eating sticky foods. Then, on the posterior area, we would like to look at the um, mesial or the distal lingual distal buckle of our second molar or the distal buckle of our first molar on either side. If we do the first molars, it would be more symmetrical. But a lot of times on the mandibular, our molars lean to the lingual. And we're going to utilize probably the surface that has the greatest undercut because of the fact that we would have to alter our tooth less when we try to put a, an arm in that direction. So we're going to look at buckle buckle on the molar, but if we don't have that, we're going to look for lingual lingual on the molar. We also think about the fact that we have to have rest. And for the clasp assembly, if we were to choose to grab the mesial facials of the two premolars, the clasp arm would be coming from the distofacial. So it would originate back here and go into the mesial facial. And again, that's far away from back here. If we put an arm through this area to come forward, then we need to have a rest, which would actually be on both of the teeth in this area. And whenever we take an arm, between two teeth like this, we need to have an embrasure rest. The reason being, let's say we take a root arm through this way, when and we had a rest on this tooth, if we don't have one on here and the patient bites something in the anterior area and this tooth wants to depress, that arm wants to wedge between those two teeth and it's sort of like to, uh, sticking a toothpick in your mouth and putting it between two teeth and kind of prying them apart. But if we put an embrasure rest in that area, then when we bite on this tooth, both teeth will depress and you will not get that wedging effect. So we would have an embrasure rest here. For our direct retainers back in this area, we will place an embrasure rest either right here or here or here depending on whether we decide we're going to grab the distofacial or distolingual of the molar, in which case we'll come with our embrasure right here. Or if we go back this far, we'll have an embrasure rest here and grab either the distofacial or the distolingual. So now we have a plan. We know what we're going to look for when we get ready to actually survey our cast. Thinking of all the rules of the Kennedy Class 4, and what we're trying to do to achieve stability and retention on this particular RPD. The other rule states 
that we have to have a rest next to or near our edentulous area. So therefore, on this canine, we would have to have an additional rest on our canines. And on a mandibular canine, we don't have very thick enamel in this area. Therefore, on the mandibular canines, we choose to place a distal incisal angle rest. And the reason we place it toward the distal is that it's a little less visible because it kind of hides behind the curvature. And sometimes it doesn't look as bad as if we would come up here with a mesial rest. So, we have a plan. We're going to look for retention here and here and back here or here or back here or here. So that's where we will proceed with our survey. The other thing that we will have is we will have um, a lingual, well, we'll have a major connector that connects all of these areas together. We don't really have a lingual bar plate. We'll probably plate those canines but it's not like we have a lot of teeth that we have to choose between a bar or plate on the anteriors. So that gives us a plan.